Hmm, looks like we're alive. How about that? Uh, let's make a little bit of an announcement before we actually start doing anything. Right. So it's gonna be a red circle live on Twitch and hopefully it's not super loud. Okay, so uh, my uh, my typing is not super loud, which is nice. Uh, HTTPS, Twitch, TV, slash sodding, ping. Did I change the title? Yeah, I did change it <laughs> because I copy pasted the stuff from the title anyway. All uh, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, what are we doing uh, today? I guess we're doing a programming, making a programming language. Um, hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? Hello, hello. Um, welcome to a new apartment, I suppose. It's not really new, it's actually an old one. I moved back. Mm. So, yeah. The programming language we're going to be doing today is going to be called, uh, let me create a folder, uh, Porth, right? So we're going to be making some sort of like a fourth, uh, but in Python, right? And on top of that, I actually want to make it compilable. Um, so it will compile to native code. Um, but to make it a little bit easier for myself, I'm going to actually translate it to assembly and then we're going to uh, compile the assembly and link the assembly. So that's gonna be the idea. So maybe I'm gonna actually put some sort of a readme first, right? So this is gonna be uh, Porth. Uh, it's like fourth, but uh, in Python, right? Uh, but I don't actually know uh, since I never programmed in fourth. Mm, I only heard that it's some sort of stack-based uh, programming language. Programming language. <laughs> uh, Porth is also stack-based programming language, um, which makes which makes it uh, just like Porth. Uh, am I am I right? Right. So that's basically. Uh, the description of the programming language that we're about to do, actually about to make. And uh, yeah, it's like Forest, but in Python. But I don't actually know, um, since I never programmed in Forest, I only heard that it's some sort of stack based programming language. Forest is also stack based programming language, which makes it just like Forest, am I right? Uh, so, yeah, that's basically the idea. That's basically the idea. So uh, I'm going to release the entire shed under MIT license if anyone needs that. So there you go. You can use this entire thing uh, under MIT license if you want to. And I'm going to create a file called porthpy. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So it's going to be in, uh, I think we're going to do user bin environment Python 3. We're going to be using Python 3 in 2021, right? So because Using Python 2 in 2021 is kind of cringe, am I right? Mm -mm. I do think so. Does anyone even still use Python 2 in 2021? I mean, my operating system still uses, uses it. So every time I run Python, it by default starts Python 2, right? So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's a very old um, Debian. Uh, not new fetch, new fetch. Mm. Mm, Python 4 is coming soon. Uh, Python 4. Let me actually Google that. Uh, do, do, do. Let me actually Google that. Python 4. I'm going to do that on the second screen just in case. Mm, mm, mm. Why Python 4 might never arrive according to its creator? Like literally the first link when you try to Google Python 4. I mean, how am I supposed to trust the chat after that, right? It's just like literally debated me. Uh, I know there is Python 5. I programmed in Python 5 and Python 5 is a missile. <laughs> um, so Python 5 is currently the most capable air-to-air -air missile in Israeli inventory and one of the most advanced AAMS in the world. Yeah, 
pretty cool. Anyways, we're gonna be using Python 3. Um, so, I don't even know, maybe we're gonna start with some sort of like intermediate representation, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, Iguduk, what's up? What's up, Iguduk? How's it going? Mm -mm, mm -mm. And um, I suppose the easiest thing, like I want, uh, we'll get a subscription, um, Ellipse0934, thank you so much for uh, three months of tier one subscription, thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to our epic Python club, how about that? So first thing I want to do, I want to have enumeration um, that enumerates different operations that you can do in this stack-based language. And as far as I know, enumerations in Python are kind of meh. Uh, I don't really like them. Um, I don't really like them, so I want to kind of reinvent my own enumeration. Yeah, you have to import this thing, and you also have that stuff, and it's just like kind of sus. Um, it's definitely not my cup of tea, if you know what I'm talking about. I rather prefer enumerations in a style of C. Um, and what's interesting is that I think Go came up with a pretty cool idea on enumerations that we can adapt for Python. Uh, Golang enumerations. Do you guys know how you do enumerations in Golang? Um, <clears throat> it's actually a pretty interesting idea, not gonna lie. So essentially, you don't have enumerations on uh, on the level of a language, on the level of the type system at all, uh, you can only create constants, but there is a special expression or special keyword, right? It, it's called IOTA. I, I think this is how we pronounce it. Is that how we're supposed to pronounce it? I think it's IOTA, right? Uh, it's like a Toyota, but I, IOTA, right? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Um, mm, 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 mm. Anyways. So we can take a look at this thing and what it does. <clears throat> so the Go programming language which is within the constant declaration, the predeclared identifier IOTA represents successive untyped integer constants. Its value is the index of the respective const spec in that constant declaration starting at zero. It can be used to construct a set of related constants. Right. So that's actually pretty cool. Uh, Nerdy Pop Rocks is gifting one tier sub to Sodium Community. They're gifting the sub to Sky Tickless. Thank you, thank you so much for gifting the sub. And Sky Tickless, welcome to our epic IOTA Club. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, we can even try that, I suppose. We can do something like main.go, right? Uh, it's in the package main and it's in the func main uh, and I probably have to import something like uh, FMT right, so this is FMT and maybe I want to disable white space uh, print f um, mm -hmm, hello world there we go so if I do something like I probably need to save this entire thing right, it's gonna be go run and we're gonna run this entire thing and it should just say hello world hopefully after it warms up all of the caches right there we go so it says hello world so and now we can define some different constants in here so this is going to be const and what we can define is foo uh iota and then bar and then uh buzz as far as i know it automatically will create uh, will assign zero to full one to bar and two to buzz and we can actually relatively easy to check that um so this is going to be full equal to um can i just do something like d uh like so this is going to be full this is going to be bar this is going to be buzz right there we go mm, and if i try to run this shit now right it's not going to compile uh because uh, extra expression in const declaration. So we're probably not supposed to do this kind of thing. Is that what you want from me? Yeah, that's what it wanted from me. Right, and what, what's cool is that uh, if you stick uh, something like hello in here, it will automatically sort of recalculate the rest of the values here. So it acts basically like, uh, you know, like enumerations in C, but where you explicitly say uh, which things are more successful. It's like C enumerations, but with more control over how the values are 
generated. I, I really, really like that idea. Um, I think it's rather interesting, right? And then you can say something like count, and this is how many of those things you have in here, right? So you have uh, four of them, and count is, in fact, is going to be four. Um, so I think this is the idiomatic way of doing that in Go, and I really want to adapt that in, uh, in Python. <clears throat> oh, and another interesting thing is that iota value is reset uh, every time you write const, right? Every time you write const, iota starts from zero, right? So that way you can create several of those things. And what's cool is that you can also use it in different expressions to actually create masks and whatnot. And holy well, shit, this is actually so cool. Yeah, it's so convenient for creating masks. Um, I really like that. Yeah, this is a really genius idea, actually. You think about it. Um, really like that. Okay, so uh, oh my god, my, my mouse is actually kind of crazy. So let's remove that and let's try to create something similar for Python. So I think to create something similar for Python, we'll have to create a global variable. Uh, let's call it iota count uh, counter, and it's going to start from zero, right? And I think in our case, iota is going to be more like a function, if you know what I'm talking about, right? So it's more like a function. So we'll need to save the current iota counter, uh, right? And then we'll have to increment iota counter by one, uh, like so, and then we'll have to return the result. And there you go, we have iota. So, and uh, now I should be able to create different operations for our programming language. So since it's, it's gonna be like forced like uh, programming language, we're gonna have like sort of operations like in a stack based virtual machine. So the first operation I want to have is op push to push a value onto the stack, and this is going to be iota like this. So then, uh, what else do we, do we want to have in here? I think we want to be able to sum up numbers on the stack, and also we want to be able to sort of debug print uh, the current thing on the stack. Uh, like in fourth, you have dot that prints the current thing on the stack. We're going to have a similar thing in here, and I think I'm going to call it something like dump. Right, for now, I think this should be enough, right? And that will create a uh, sort of failure in successive order, like 0, 1, and 2. Uh, maybe on top of that, we'll be able to create something like count all piece, and this is going to be iota. Right, but that does not address the uh, sort of use case when you want to have uh, several enumerations in here, right? So iota does not reset ever. So what I'm thinking is maybe we're gonna have a parameter here that tells us that you want to reset uh, the counter before actually starting anything, right? So if you want to reset, we're gonna uh, set IO counter to um, zero. And I think this is not going to work because IOTA counter is a global variable. So we'll have to put something like a global uh, IOTA counter, right? So something like this. Um, all right, so let's actually see if it's going to work. So I'm going to print uh, op push, uh, op push. I wonder if it's going to put uh, like a space between these uh, parameters. We're about to find out. So and this one is going to be dump, and this one is going to be uh, count ops. All right. Uh, so let me add executable permissions to this entire thing, and I'm going to do porth. There we go, so here are the values. So op push is zero, op plus is one, and the whole amount of uh, operations in here is actually three. So now we have like a go-like, uh, go-style um, go style enumerations, and I can say that this is where we start our new enumeration, right? And after that, I can have another enumeration, like something like Monday, uh, iota true, um, Tuesday, um, you don't have to reset this entire thing. Uh, Wednesday, Wednesday um, and so on and so forth. And then we can just uh, confirm that this entire thing is going to work the way we expect it to work. Right? I'm going to do something. Like print. Uh, I'm going to copy paste this entire thing like so. And there we go. Right. So let's actually see. Uh, if it is working, uh, so I think I did something weird. I think I changed the um, the mode for this entire thing. 
Mm, so if I try to run this entire stuff and it didn't work because I did a fucky wacky. Yeah, yeah, so I wanted to... Uh, I did Tuesday twice. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, I'll actually remove this thing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, there we go. And as you can see, like it restarts every time I, I put uh, true in there. Right? So, but it doesn't really matter. We don't need a second enumeration right now. I'm gonna just keep this enumeration like so. Um, all right, so we want to have a, some sort of a program, right? We want to have some sort of a program. Some of the operations uh, are going to have some sort of parameters, like push is definitely need some sort of parameter. It needs a parameter of what you want to push into the stack. So maybe for us, a single operation is going to be sequence of tuples, right? So the first element of the tuple is going to be the type, um, and the uh, successive elements are going to be the parameters of the um, of the operation, like sort of operands, if you know what I'm talking about. So maybe because of that, we want to have a convenient way of constructing uh, different operations, if you know what I'm talking about. All right. So I'm going to do def uh, push x, and this entire thing is going to just return op push uh, op push x. Right. So and plus uh, is not going to take any parameters, but it is going to return like op plus like so. So as far as I know, if you want to create a tuple of a single element, you just put this element in here and put a comma, right? And that's basically uh, a tuple with a single element. Because if you just don't put a comma in here, it's basically an ex a single expression just wrapped in parentheses. That's what it is. Uh, so it's not going to work at all. Uh, we can even check that. So if you have one to three, right, it's just like a number. And I think we can even grab a type of this entire thing. Yeah, it's integer. But if you put a comma in here, uh, it's a tuple, right? So that's how you make a tuple of a single element. Mm -mm. Tuple of a single element. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Uh, two, 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 two. So then we want to define dump and uh, we're going to just, uh, yeah, I forgot. I was talking about that and I completely forgot to put a comma in here. So this is going to be dump and there we go. So now we can easily create a simple program, right? So our program is going to be essentially push 34, push 35, uh, plus and dump. There we go. We wrote a simple program that pushes two numbers into the stack, some sort of imaginary stack, uh, sum them up and just brings all of that to, to the screen, right? So this is our program. And uh, I suppose for our language, it would be nice to actually have two modes, the simulation mode and the compilation mode. I do have plans to actually compile this entire thing into native code, right? Uh, but to test things out, if I'm introducing new operations, I think it would make sense to, uh, you know, first simulate it, just see how it works and only then uh, go into the compilation. So we're going to have two modes. Uh, so I'm going to introduce two functions, I suppose, something like simulate program, right? Uh, it will accept the program. Uh, and let's say that, uh, how do you use a certain Python? I don't remember. Mm, I'm not a Python developer, so I'm really sorry if I'm making stupid mistakes. Stupid fucking mistakes, man. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm not a Python developer. I'm not a developer at all. So I have no idea how to use this shit. I'm sorry. Uh, so assert, assert, okay, so condition, can I have a message along with condition? Uh, I, I can, okay, so this is actually pretty cool. Um, let me see, so this is going to be Python 3, and I'm going to assert false, uh, assertion false, okay, so hello chat, and assertion uh, error, hello chat, there we go. <clears throat> so there we go. And I'm going to say something like uh, not implemented. Mm. Mm. So compile program. And uh, in here, we're also going to do something like assert false not implemented. Right. There we go. Nothing is implemented. Uh, and I suppose for now, we're going to just do something like simulate program. Uh, and there we go. So I'm going to try to... Why I keep switching to the Pascal mode? This is a, a rather interesting, right? I keep switching to the Pascal mode. Okay. Every time I try to compile my entire thing. Yeah. 
so port pi and there we go so it fails here uh, in here it's not implemented okay so let's actually go ahead and iterate through each individual operation in the program right and if uh, op0 is equal op push right we're gonna do one thing right so it's gonna be false that scared the shit out of me. this language does not join bank in the language graveyard. I mean, bank is not dead, okay? So I do, I still do have plans for bank. Uh, so it's just like on the head. It's, like, I don't really have dead languages. I only have uh, post languages. Um, I mean, I don't have a dead projects. I only have uh, post projects because eventually I do plan to return to them because it's basically a content that at some point I can reuse. Right, so because I already did one series where I actually go back uh, and just like look at the project uh, with like a new perspective. And uh, yeah, that was additional content. So every time I ran out of ideas, I'm going to be basically going back to old projects and just trying to find something interesting to do with them. So nothing goes to waste. Nothing goes to waste. And thank you so much for 500 beats. My God. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> you could try compiling to Python byte code, by the way. I could, but why? <laughs> it's actually easier to compile to, I think, x86-64 for me, at least because I know uh, x86-64 better than I know Python byte code. So to compile to Python byte code, I'll have to study it. Uh, and yeah, so it's just easier for me to use x86-64. Mm. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. Python bytecode. Is Python bytecode super scary? Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right, let's continue. Um, mm -hmm. H quill. Uh, thank you so much for two months of the Twitch Prime. I know I troll most of the time, but really appreciate your content меньше чем три. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for appreciating my content and for two months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate it too. Uh, okay, so we're gonna have plus in here, and this is gonna be assert. And L if. Uh, is going to be something like, oh my god, uh, op0 equal op dump, and we're gonna assert false in here. And I suppose um, other Liparos subscribed at tier 1. Thank you, thank you so much for tier 1 subscription, your first subscription, by the way. Welcome to our epic Python club. How about that? Isn't that amazing? Holy shit. Thank you, thank you so much. So, and in here I suppose I'm gonna say something like unreachable, right? So, unreachable, uh, because that means you provided um, an operand that we are not aware of, right? We're not aware of this operand, so this thing should be unreachable. Uh, and you know, I have a pretty cool idea. One of the things that uh, really that I find really frustrating about Python is that it's difficult cre to create enumeration and then do a switch case on that enumeration and let the interpreter um, and make the interpreter let me know when I add a new value to that enumeration that I have to go uh, to these switch cases and update them. This is one of the most frustrating things that I find in Python, and I think I finally found a workaround for that um, for that situation. And it actually uh, synergizes with the way I generate enumerations. So essentially, right in front of this switch case, right in front of this switch case, I'm going to put an assert, and I'm going to say that while when I was writing this switch case, uh, I expected. Uh, this amount of operands, uh, exhaustive, uh, exhaustive um, handling of operations in simulation. Next time I add a new operation in here, next time I add a new operation in here, uh, and then execution goes in here, it will fail with this assertion, letting me know that I didn't uh, fully handle all of this. 
Uh, Ice Leo, thank you so much for three months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic, uh, exhaustive handling of operations club. So, yeah, this is basically the way I found to sort of comfortably work um, with, um, you know, enumerations and switch cases in Python. Uh, I know that in latest Python, they sort of introduced like, yeah, people say a match case, and I'm not sure if that thing actually fixes the problem that I'm talking about. Uh, so it's rather interesting. It is, in fact, rather interesting for me. Um, mm, all right, so Python uh, match case. Mm, switch case statement are coming to uh to python so let's actually take a look at them deep singularity what's up how are you doing? okay match case uh, 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 are absent for python despite being common feature in most languages uh fast forward blah 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 structural mm, falsy okay. for some reason my yeah real use case with json i'm not sure if it actually solves my problem that's the that's the thing uh jose gpt i hope i pronounced your name correctly thank you so much for tier one subscription your first subscription by the way uh and welcome to our epic python club i'm not sure if it addresses whatever i said so i will have to look into that but so far this thing is really really important for me uh all righty I don't think it does. Very well then. I mean, it's fine with uh, with the assertion, right? So it is fine with the assertion, and it actually kind of works well for me. Um, okay, so I suppose we'll need to create something like stack in here, right? And um, now I'm gonna do a stack. I think it's append, and what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be appending the uh, one in here, right? So we appended the stack, and then when I wanna do plus, I wanna actually pop. A couple of elements from this stack right so i'm gonna have a uh, stack pop uh, then b and then i'm gonna append a sum of these elements back into the stack right and if i want to dump something what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna be popping this from the stack right and then i'm gonna be printing this entire thing uh, and there we go so we implemented a very simple interpreter for our uh, programming language right so yeah it's not a compiler, but it's a simple interpreter. Um, all right, so let me try to run this entire thing and see, and it printed 69, would you look at that? So that's exactly what we expected. Very nice result, very, very nice result because we just pushed a 34 and 35 and it printed this entire thing. Uh, we can try to push something like 420 and dump it yet again, right? So uh, there we go, 69, 420. So that's pretty cool. So we have a simple interpreter for our program, which is quite nice, which is quite nice. So, and let's actually test uh, our, um, you know, idea with the assert. If I try to add something like, let's say, uh, minus, actually, that's really strange. Yeah, it has to be three. All right. So if I try to add minus uh, to the plus and just try to run it, it instantly failed in here, letting me know that I didn't handle all of the things in here. All right, so what I have to do now is uh, if op zero op uh, minus, right, so it's going to be uh, a stack pop, mm, then it's going to be b stack append a minus b. There we go. And then I'm going to say that I do expect four operands in here, and there we go, everything seems to be working. So maybe we can do the following thing. I'm gonna push uh, 500, 500, then I'm gonna push uh, 80, and I'm gonna do minus between those things, and will that work? Okay, so if I got a comma in here, and uh, yeah, we don't have a constructor for the minus, all right. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, define minus um, return p minus. There we go. Mm, okay, that that kind of worked. Uh, but interestingly enough, I think we have to actually subtract them in a different order. I do think so. 
Yeah, because this is the top and this is below the top and I would expect them to be in a slightly different order, I think. So I'm gonna actually swap them around. Super quick, yeah, 69 for 20. Okay, that, that looks great. That looks pretty great. Uh, so let's implement the compilation, I suppose. Do I still have a little bit of tea? I do have a little bit of tea. Mm. <laughs> Sir Ramon, what's up? How are you doing? Welcome, 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 Sir Ramon. We are programming in Bison. Um, programming in Bison. Bison. <laughs> uh, so, how am I going to be compiling? So, I think maybe compile program will accept the the program right and it will speed out the assembly right i think that's one of the things we can do mm, you know what let's actually make uh this program sort of like self-contained executable right with sub commands and shit okay i think it's a good idea so this is going to be the program it's hard-coded program for now so i'm going to put it to do unhard code program uh, we want to be able to actually load that program from a file or something like that right so but for now it's going to be hard coded so let's check that we are um, you know in an entry point right and uh, what i want to do in here i want to handle the uh, arguments right i want to handle the arguments mm -hmm. so i want to move to this folder super quick Okay, so we're gonna have Python 3. And is it in sys? Uh, arg, there we go. It is in fact in sys. So if sys argv, I suppose length, is less than two, right? Because the first one is gonna be the program itself and the, and the rest of the arguments are the arguments that the user put in front of the program, right? So um, if we're less than two, we're gonna say something like print, uh, usage. Um, this one is going to be fourth um, subcommand. Subcommand. Uh, and I suppose arguments of the subcommands, like this. And the subcommands that we're going to have in here, uh, subcommands, are going to be the following one, two, three, four. Uh, simulation, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Simulate the program. Mm, then we're gonna do something like com uh, compile the program. There we go. So we're gonna have two sub commands, right? Two sub commands. And after that, of course, we're gonna exit with one, right? If you didn't write enough sub commands. Right? So now, if I try to uh, run this entire thing, it will. Oh yeah, we didn't import sys. Okay, import sys. And there we go. So it tells us, it tells us that uh, we didn't provide the subcommand. If I provide the subcommand, it will do nothing, right? Uh, because we don't handle uh, subcommands yet. Okay. So let's do the following thing: subcommand equal to sys argv argv1 argv1 zulu. And if subcommand uh, is equal to simulation, uh, we're going to do simulate program. And we're just simulating the hard-coded program that we're going to unhard code later. Later. So uh, subcommand equal com, and here we're going to compile the program. So this is going to be program. And otherwise, we can throw some sort of an exception, saying something like uh, error um, mm -mm -mm, unknown uh, unknown subcommand, and we can also print that subcommand in here just in case. I suppose that would be useful, and then we can exit with one. Um, and I just realized that I never actually explained to the user what exactly went wrong in here. So I suppose it would be nice to say something like error, um, you know, no subcommand is provided, right? No subcommand is provided. And maybe I want to extract the usage to a separate function. I think it's going to be nice. So I'm going to put it in here and uh, like so. So if we encounter an error, we print the usage, then we say what exactly went wrong and we exit with non-zero exit code. The same thing goes here as well. Mm. 
The same thing goes here as well. All righty, all righty, all righty, righty, righty. Okay, so uh, compilation is not implemented, but the simulation is implemented. Would you look at that? So we can't do compilation yet, but we can do a simulation. Pretty cool. So if we're going to be doing compilation, we need to generate the assembly code. To generate the assembly code, I think we need to remember how to write the simplest um, you know, Linux program in assembly. Uh, Linux program in assembly. So I need to remember how to do that. So let's actually write a hello world in assembly. So if I remember um, how to program in assembly for elf, you have several segments, right? So you have a segment text where you store the code then you have a segment data where you store initialized data and uh, you also have a segment bss where you store uninitialized data right so um i think in this for the hello world not even hello world but but the simple program that basically exits with zero code we only need text because we don't need any data right so we also need to define the entry point, right? The entry point on Linux is usually called start, if I remember correctly, right? So it is start. Um, and you won't be able to just compile it because you have to mark the start as a global thing. So because by default, it's, it's sort of like an internal symbol. But this is the like, smallest assembly program that you can write, I think. Uh, and we can try to compile it. So it's gonna be nazm, uh, hello azm. And yeah, it actually compiled it and it generated a hello uh, with a single thing. Right, so it actually generated like a row binary, which is not what we want. Uh, it's a generated row binary. So we wanna, what we want to have instead, I think we want to have elf64 executable. There we go, it generated elf64 executable. Right, and as far as I know, it, it does contain start. It does contain start, but I don't think uh, it is visible. So if we try to link this program uh, to hello, uh, hello.o, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it cannot find the, the symbol. So the way we have to do that, we have to say that the start is a global symbol. I think this is how we do that in Nazm. Uh, I think how we do that in Nazm, but I'm not 100% sure. So let's actually see. Well, maybe we'll have to Google up shit. I need GitHub Copilot. Like I applied for GitHub Copilot uh, some time ago and they actually never answered to me uh, but the more I program the more I realizing that I really want to have that thing because quite often I just want to quickly look up something and I don't want to google uh, or anything I just want to tell yeah this is roughly what I want could you please give me the snippet that does that because I'm too lazy to to write it down it, it will be actually kind of insane um, I really want to have this thing <laughs> believe it or not <laughs> because I think it would actually improve my workflow Especially if it knows how to do low-level stuff, that would be actually perfect. By the way, I was thinking uh, for what kind of stuff, uh, you know, these kind of things would be useful. And I think the OpenAI should make a product where you can train your own codex. You see, codex is trained on open source, um, open source data. I think they should be able to have a product where I can throw my proprietary code into this model and I can host that mo uh, model on my own computers. So I can actually do like, um, you know, proprietary knowledge. I, I want to have a proprietary knowledge system. And you know what's even cooler? Uh, I want to be able to throw not only my code or my proprietary product in, into this model, I want to uh, actually throw all of the conversations in all of the chats, in all of the emails into that model. So that model has all of the knowledge about what's going on in the company. So anyone who joins the company can just ask what the fuck is going on. And that model will answer you in the style of GitHub Copilot. I think they should make something like that. That would be fucking awesome because there is a lot of, um, companies like with proprietary uh, stuff where they cannot replace people because people have too much knowledge right so there are some particular people that are 
expert in a particular area of the application and they don't like sharing that knowledge. With that model, you can actually take away job security of those people from this company and actually fire them. So you're gonna have an AI that have like knowledge about everything what's going on in the company and can answer any question. Like for example, you have a huge enterprise system and you need to add a new table, but to add a new table to the database, you need to do extra steps that only one person in the company knows. Instead of going to that uh, person, you can ask that AI and since AI has the knowledge of all of the things, it can tell you that you have to do that, that and that. So that's the real threat for job security of such people, if you know what I'm talking about. So, mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Copilot steals code without copyright notice. Oh yeah, I heard that take. So I, I remember somebody make a take that uh, Copilot is essentially like code laundry, right? So basically you can clean the license out of the code because it's a novel... <laughs> completely novel generated thing I, I heard that <laughs> so uh, you've been <laughs> uh, yeah. and no one will want to work in a company like that I mean maybe with such AI nobody will need, need to work in such company <laughs> maybe such company will basically hire only one person uh, that basically asks all of the question to that AI and basically does all of the work, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I don't know, maybe this is how it's gonna go. Uh, we'll see. Uh, mm, 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 mm. So it's almost like with the with these cafes where everything is automated and only one person uh, is sitting there like supervising everything that is going on there maybe with these kind of models and if you start integrating that models into the companies it's going to be the same uh, all of the knowledge now contained within the model and you need only one person supervising everything and just asking questions to that AI so I don't know it's kind of difficult to predict the future maybe it's not going to be like that we'll see um New company model AI rules the world with one person just asking. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. So it's like complete singularity. Um, anyway, so we need to write a simple, a single, um, simple program. Mm. Mm, you have an evil plan to fire people. Oh yeah, I do. Um, to be fair, I have all of these ideas because I don't care because I don't work in this industry anyway. So I'm not really afraid to be fired from that industry. So I just, I just literally don't care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who will choose that one person? Board of directors? Maybe the directors themselves are going to be the, those people. So maybe this AI will make the information so approachable that even non-technical people will be able to just maintain everything. I don't know. I'll see. Okay. So what I'm thinking is that maybe the compile program step is going to call Nazem and Linker for us. I think that's a pretty cool idea. So uh, Python um, run external uh, external command. Mm, 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 mm. How to call? I already googled that before. Uh, already actually googled that before. Ah, it's a sub process. Okay, I think I remember that. Mm, import sub. Why I keep starting Python too? Um, oh wait a second! I have IPython, the Python from Apple. Oh my god! Do you guys know that Apple made its own Python? It's called IPython. It's so fucking great. It's slow for whatever reason, but yeah. So uh, I'm gonna import sub uh, sub process. Oh my god! Why is everything? My computer is so bad and fucking slow. I don't know why. Uh, import sub process. Uh, okay, in the sub process, uh, I'm gonna call. Right? Is that how we do that? So it's gonna be help. Uh, right. Run command with the arguments. Wait for command to complete. Okay. So you provide the list of the arguments. Okay. So it's gonna be call and it's gonna be echo um, something like hello chat. Right. 
Uh, there we go. So it said hello chat. So we can call external commands like that, which is rather convenient in my opinion. Right. So mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm thinking and thinking and thinking, thinking, thinking. Okay, so I'm gonna actually do that a little bit later, right? So I'm gonna create like a build sh in here, right? So it's gonna be bin sh. Uh, all right, mm, bin sh, and it feels kind of strange. My my computer having having trouble to actually work properly. Maybe it's actually too warm. Yeah. I think that's what's going on here. Your audio started to start anymore after. Oh, yeah. FPS is dropping. I don't know what's going on. I think my computer is dying, essentially. Mm, yeah, T100%. And I have no idea how to fix that somehow. Oh, boy. That is really, really bad. Okay, so I'll need to come up with something super quick. Maybe put something under the under the laptop. I think I have a couple of ideas. Just a second, chat. Just a second. Everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> Everything's gonna be fine fast. I hope we're not gonna die. Uh, all right, so I put something under, so there is like some sort of like air circulation under the laptop. Hopefully that will uh, make the situation a little bit better. Um, so, Mm -mm. All right. Yeah, I remember on in my previous setup, uh, what I had, I had small plates, you know, um, like a very small plates, and I put them like under the laptop, so there is a little bit of a gap between the table and the laptop, so there is some sort of circulation, and this this is how it worked, and it uh, kept the temperature like around uh, 90. So now I actually get rid of them, and the table is actually a wooden one. So I suppose wood has a lot of thermal uh, thermal isolation, so that could be bad. That could be really, really bad. We'll see. So I just put something uh, between the table and the laptops to have, you know, some sort of a gap. With all this noisy laptop cooler is slow. Well, I'm just afraid how it's gonna sound on the stream, if you know what I'm talking about. But thank you. Thank you so much for 100 bits. Um, I was thinking about that for quite some time already. Mm. <clears throat> all right. So um, hopefully the sound is gonna be fine. Uh, no. Mm. I saw that your old YouTube channel is booming. Really? Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, just I just put my computer inside the freezer. Easy win, pet head. Pet head, in indeed. Thank you so much for 25 months of Twitch Prime Subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our Epic 5 Head Club. Uh, oh shit! Yeah, thank you so much for reminding me that. Yeah, I forgot about this category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wasn't really rebelling. So game, uh, uh software. What was it? Programming. I, I completely forgot about that. Like this category was created when I was on vacation. So I completely missed that one. <laughs> uh, come on, Twitch. You can do that. I, I believe in you. You know what's funny? You know that it basic the the query is basically failed, and UI failed to reflect that. Like you know that, but I keep waiting. Okay, so to answer your question, this is why. This is why I'm rebelling against uh, programming in game development section because I cannot switch to it. Uh, 64. 
Mm, Alright. So this is gonna be hello. Oh yeah, Rick five wait, what the fuck? Five the, the last time I checked it, it was two million views. Since when it has five? God damn it, too bad my channel that channel is not monetized. God fucking damn it. Um all right. Rick uh, roll, but it never starts. I do remember making this thing like three years ago. Five? What the fuck? What the fuck is wrong with people? Why why people watch that? <sighs> anyway. It's not monetized anyway, so I, I get nothing from that. But at least I can say that I made a video uh, that took a lot of views on YouTube. Uh, Alright, so this is the hello, and uh, this is gonna be hello Azum. Awesome. There we go. So then we're gonna do LD. Uh, hello, hello Azum. Awesome. There we go. Uh, and then we're gonna do it like that. Uh, build. And we have a syntax error somewhere in assembly, and I wonder why. Uh, probably because I'm trying to link something that is. Uh, yeah, I, I'm supposed to link O. There we go. So I also want to set X E. Uh, right, and there we go. So we have a uh, executable. Uh, but here is an interesting thing. Uh, if I try to run this, and I think it's because uh, it will uh, send the segmentation fault. Uh, so. So what's the problem here? Why this program would suck fault? <clears throat> Who knows why such program will suck fault? It's a very interesting question. Yeah, because to actually exit an application in Linux, you have to uh, uh, call an exit syscall. If you don't call an exit syscall, like it will hit the red. And as far as I know, red will try to return to something that is on the stack. But as far as I know, right now there is nothing on the stack, so it will try to return to garbage. Like it will just grab some garbage from the memory and it will just jump somewhere where it's not supposed to execute. And this is how it will basically crash. So uh, what we need to do in here is we have to call an exit syscall. So we need to find the table of syscalls. Uh, Linux syscalls. Linux syscalls. Uh, to, to search about Linux syscall table. Let's take a look at that shite. 64. All right, so here are the syscalls. Mm, so the exit syscall, where is it? Exit. There we go. The exit syscall is actually 60. And the way you call the syscalls is that you put them in racks. This is actually kind of lame table. Let me find a different one. I don't like this one. So I think we're going to use the Chromium OS one. Um, mm, 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 mm. Okay. So so the way you call the syscall, right, you put the number of a syscall into racks and the arguments into RDI, RSI, RDX, R10, R8, and so on and so forth correspondingly. So these registers are the arguments of the syscall. So in our case, we want to call exit syscall, right? So the exit uh, syscall has a number 30, uh, 60, I'm sorry, no, 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 30. So we'll have to move uh, racks, and um, I think I'm gonna do something like sys exit, right? So this is gonna be sys exit. We can, we can have a macros in here, which is rather convenient. So sys exit is gonna be uh, 60. Why do I wanna put 30 in here? I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with me. Right, then the first argument is the error code, and it's in RDI. But I want to actually put something there that will, you know, let us know that we did everything correctly. Let's put some special number in here, like 69. And after that, we need to call the syscall, and that is it. So after that, the program should just exit with the 69 exit code. Right, let's try to build this entire thing. Uh, there we go. And we've got a program, right? And if I try to run the entire program, it exited abnormally, but it exited with the code 69. 
There we go. So at least from assembly, we can now control uh, what kind of uh, code is going to be executed when it exits. Right, so... Um, ah. 420. Yeah, 420 doesn't fit into the uh, byte, I suppose. Yeah. I guess it couldn't be bigger than a byte. Yeah, 255 is the maximum. All right. Very well then. So, but we want to exit with zero. So this is like the minimum program that we want to have in here, right? So, and let's try to rebuild it one more time and see how successfully it exits. As you can see, it exited successfully, right? So this is going to be the basis of our compiler. Um, it's going to be the basis of our compiler. What's funny is that we probably don't even need return in this case, right? So return is going to be like unreachable. As soon as you call exit, the operating system is going to be yeet you out of the memory, so you don't need to return to anything, right? So that's pretty much it. Uh, alrighty, so what I want to do is essentially when I compile the program, I want to generate assembly into a file and then call external commands. I want to call all of these commands from the Python Python myself, right? I want the Python script to be sort of self-contained, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so how do I open the file? So I suppose you do something like with uh, open um, something like output as an, uh, as f, um, maybe it's going to be like output, right? And this is where I can print shit. But they don't remember how to print shit. So it's gonna be interesting. So I have an idea. Um, so what if I open uh, like this? So here is F. Uh, no such. Um, mm, 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 let me take a look at help. Mm, mod. You can specify the mod. Okay, so I wanna specify the mod for writing. Uh, right, and there we go. So then I can take a look at the help for this thing. Uh, IO wrapper. So can I do something like write? Uh -huh. I can write the text. All right, so I can do something like write um, hello um, world new line. And can I close this entire thing now? And then if I exit, right, if I exit and I take a look at output awesome. Okay, so here is the hello world. I think this is how you do all of that, right? I think how you do all of that. Cool. So this is gonna be output and um, mm, 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 mm. so the out, maybe it's gonna be even out. Out, right. Mm. Awesome, hello. So maybe since the generated code is not designed to be read by humans, I'm gonna simply do the following thing. Right, I'm gonna do it like that. Out, right, like so. New line, uh, a boom. This is going to be output asm. <clears throat> gaming chair. Yes, it is gaming chair. Um, mm, 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 mm. So if I try to now run porth uh, pi, right? Porth pi. Uh, so for the compilation, right? Uh, let's save everything and not writable. Segment text. Oh yeah, because I didn't open this for like a writing mode, of course. Uh, and it generated the output asm, which contains everything that I wanted to see in here. Uh, which contains everything. Maybe I'm gonna actually, you know, put this entire compilation inside of the compile program. Yes, I think that's a cool idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm gonna put that in inside of the compile program. All right. Mm. One, two, three, four, uh, like so. And I also can do something like out file path, right? So this is going to be out file path, like so. Uh, then I compile the program into output assembly. 
and then I'm starting to call uh, different sub-processes. Sub-process, uh, sub-process call um, nasm f f64 uh, to do to output asm and then another sub process uh, call ld um, o output output dot o there we go uh, to to do to all right that's pretty cool and if i try to compile this entire thing uh, I think it kind of worked. You see, it created output asm, then output.o, and the output executable, which I can try to run, and it, it exits successfully. I think we did that. Uh, I think we successfully did everything. All right. So now we want to compile everything. So essentially, we want to iterate through each individual operation in here and uh, generate the corresponding asm instructions. So that's essentially what we want to do in here. So, and the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to iterate through the operations in the program, right? And if op is op push, uh, right, is op push, what essentially we're going to be doing, we're going to be pushing a number onto the stack. And I think the easiest thing to use in here would be to use the push operation in x86-64. So it's going to be push, and it's going to be d. Uh, and it's going to be op1. There we go. So maybe on top of that, I want to actually generate some sort of a, like uh, a thing. Uh, this is going to be push uh, d and op1. So we also probably have to put like a new line in here. So l if op0 op plus. This one is going to be very interesting. Mm. So I, th I think I'm going to actually skip all of these things, except uh, I'm going to just do something like plus, right? So this is going to be just plus, um, and maybe not implement it. Uh, wait a second. In assembly, the comment is actually this. Okay. So I've been programming in, in Haskell too, too long. <laughs> Uh, L if op0 is equal to op minus. So that's another thing we want to have in here. Uh, this is going to be minus. And uh, then plus, minus, and dump. Dump is going to be actually rather interesting. Mm. <laughs> So I think dump is going to be super fine. Why? This is so strange. Why Mr. Botka time you out? Uh, did you vanish? You probably vanished or something. Uh, we have a raid from C Sharp Fritz. Thank you so much for, for the raid and welcome raiders. Uh, it was a vanish. Okay. Hello, everyone. We're just like writing, writing. I, I think I actually like configured my uh, Chitterino to actually remove the last message of the timed out person, so that's why I didn't see it. Uh, has Tony ever shared his dieting secrets? No, uh, yes, I actually shared it multiple times. So essentially, I went on a pretty strict diet um, there where I ate only proteins, no fats, no uh, carbs for like a couple of months. And it's I do not recommend doing that because it's actually kind of dangerous for your health, but that worked uh, relatively well. No category. Yeah, this is really weird. Like Twitch doesn't allow me to change the category. Let's actually try to do that. Uh, so category programming, basic programming. Uh, I think it's software, right? So software development. Yes, yeah, so software and game development. Okay, so th thank you for reminding me about the about the stuff. Um, <clears throat> no carbs per you moody and groggy your brain needs to carbs yeah so but but the thing is um i had a lot of you know weight so i was basically going off of that gia thank you thank you so much for 27 months of tier Hi. two thank you <laughs> hi we're writing a programming language in python that compiles to native code <laughs> so yeah it is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. Um, so, um, yeah. 
<clears throat> so yeah this is basically what I did to lose so much weight and I do not recommend that uh, because it's dangerous actually but I, uh, I knew what I'm going for uh, Hamikovi, thank you so much for uh, five tier one subs and uh, everyone who got the subs welcome to our epic python uh, club I suppose um, so yeah uh, this one's gonna be to do not implemented uh, like so and I suppose here we're gonna have um, so assert false unreachable reach the unreachable mm, so we're gonna also assert that count OPs here is for exhaustive uh, handling of OPs in compilation there we go. So, uh, let me try to compile the program now and see how it goes. Mm, so we're compiling and uh, this thing... Um, okay, so it complains about this stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. So I keep forgetting. Oh my god. Yeah, I can see the mistake. I can see the mistake. Yesu, 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 kawaii freaking desu. I think I think I'm a dummy. I think I'm a straight up dummy because we don't need this kind of stuff in here. Uh, okay, so and if we take a look at the generated assembly, this is what we've got, right? So we have push 34, uh, push 35, and all of the push operations actually um, compiled successfully. Right? I wonder if you can instruct uh, the subprocess to echo the commands that you put in there. You know what I'm talking about? So subprocess, um, and uh, I want to take a look at the subprocess call. That, what does it have? Uh, two, 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 two. Doesn't look like it. Uh, Python um, subprocess call echo. Uh, two, 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 two. Why the simple echo in subprocess? Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Mm -mm. So I don't see a way to do that. So maybe there is something else. Uh, there's also run command. Run the command waits for complete and then returns. Uh, what's the difference between call? Run the command waits for then returns the return code. Uh, run. Capture output. Time out check. So uh, run commit with arguments and return code. The return instance will have subs uh, by default. Uh, uh -huh. If check is true, exit code is returned. Um, I don't really want to capture std out or std error. What I want to do, I want it to echo the command that I'm running. So uh, basically, print to the standard output what command is currently running but it feels like i'll have to do that myself um i feel like i'll have to do that myself so essentially that's what i want to have right um, mm, 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 mm. so and maybe we can create a very simple function uh, call cmd uh, right and it will just do print cmd and sub process call cmd right so we don't have any duplication uh -huh. call cmd because i want to see all of that shite sub commands uh, 14 uh, sub process Yeah, there we go. Uh, at least on that level, because I want to see what is exactly executed, right? Um, not even an option. Yeah, an, an option would be actually kind of nice, uh, but it is what it is. All right, so how are we going to do plus? Uh, I think it should be pretty straightforward. We can pop rex, right? Then rbx, and then essentially add rbx to rex and push this thing back right push rex back so the same goes for minus i suppose the same goes for minus mm, but it's gonna be sub mm -mm -mm. the only thing we need to implement is dump the only thing we need to implement is dump and we'll have to implement it actually from scratch completely uh, but maybe not. Uh, comma colon. So did I forget? Oh, I forgot the new lines. Okay, sure. 
Uh, look at the new lines. Uh, two, 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 two. Okay. Uh, all right. So if I take a look at the Asm, here is the generated assembly. Right. So it's going to be plus. This is the minus, and uh, everything seems to be working fine, except we don't have a dump. And to be fair, I don't want to implement dump. What does dump do? It prints the, uh, the current thing on the top of the stack and also consumes the stack. Yes, I moved to a different apartment recently. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me see what we can do in here. So I can actually switch the... Um, yeah, so there we go. We push a couple of numbers in here, we sum them up and we dump the result. Uh, I also push a couple of numbers, subtract them and dump them. So if instead of trying to compile, I will simulate, as you can see, so this is the sum, this is the first sum and it dumped it like, like this. And this is the uh, difference, right? And it dumped it through this command. So that's basically what it does. So, and we need to write an assembly code that just dumps a number, right? So, I have an idea. I think we're gonna cheat. <laughs> I think we're gonna cheat a little bit. I'm going to implement um, that command in C, then I'm gonna compile it to assembly, and then I'm gonna stick the assembly into, into the code generate. <laughs> because I don't really wanna do that uh, manually. So, I'm very sorry. Uh, let me see. So let's actually implement dump.c. Uh, mm -hmm. So what we want to have from this function, in fact, is... So it's not going to return anything. It is going to accept only uh, uin64, right? So this is the number it accepts. And uh, it's going to be stdint. And we're going to try to dump uh, 69 for 20. There we go. Mm. So we'll try to actually not use uh, standard C, right? We're gonna uh, use the C calls directly. Uh, okay, so we'll need some sort of a buffer into which we're gonna be collecting the digits, right? So let me quickly do that. So 64-bit number, uh, the maximum value of 64-bit number is this. If I convert it to a string and take the length of that string, so this is the maximum length uh, that we can have for such number, right? So I think allocating a buffer on the stack of the size of 32 is going to be more than enough, right? So this is going to be uh, the buffer on the stack. Uh, now, as we push uh, characters into that buffer, we need to keep track of those characters. So it's going to be buffer size. Uh, to not type too much, I'm going to actually rename it to buff, right? Something like this. All right, so now I need to iterate. While we still have uh, something, some digits within that number, we're going to uh, chop off that digit, right? Convert that into the character, right? And push that into the buffer, like so, right? So that pushes that into the buffer. And then we shift this thing yet again, uh, and that converts this entire thing into a sequence of digits. So after that, we'll have to uh, make a syscall, a right syscall. So uh, the standard output, the standard output, I think the standard output is one. Then we provide the buffer and the buffer size. So, and that thing should just print uh, the, the digits for us, right? So uh, let me see if it's gonna work. So I'm gonna compile a dump, dump.c, uh, and it's just gonna be something like dump. So uh, I think I need to import unistd. Uh, is it gonna work? Okay, so, but the problem with this approach is that it actually puts them in a, uh, in a different order, right? So you either have to um, in reverse them after you're done, or uh, you have to push them in a separate, in a separate, in a different, from a different side, right? So you have to push them in a different side. And I think pushing them from a different side is actually better uh, because after that process, you don't even need to worry about anything. So you're done 
and you can just print this entire string, right? You can just print the entire thing. So the, to push it from a different site, uh, what do we have to do? Um, so we need to know the capacity of this entire thing. So let's actually define something like this buffer capacity, right? Define buffer capacity is going to be 32. Um, maybe, maybe it doesn't matter because at any point I can just do size of buffer minus the current index, right? Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The capacity is 5, right? And the index, the current sort of index, is 0. So, by index 0, we mean 4. And if you do cap minus index, you're going to get 5. So that means you need to do extra minus 1 to get 4. So that's how we do that. So that means to refer to the, um, to the last element from the, from the different side, this is what you have to do. So, and this is where we're going to be actually pushing this entire stuff. And then I'm going to do uh, buffer uh, size uh, plus plus. There we go. So, and after that, we'll have to, I suppose, do kind of similar thing for this one, uh, like so. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure. So if we have zero in here, it will refer to that one. Um, I think here we should not put minus one. I think we shouldn't. Yeah, I think we shouldn't. So specifically in here, minus one is not needed. At least this is how I visualize in my hand. Uh, and my head, not hand. And there we go. So it's actually inverted. Would you look at that? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty fucking cool. So, but there's a problem in here. If X is initially zero, this shit is not gonna print anything. So I think, well, we can go with uh, some sort of additional condition. If x is equal zero, then return zero. But I think I have a better idea. I think for the for this specific case, it would be solved by using do while. You see, do while will force to perform at least one iteration, right? So basically, if it's zero, it will push that extra zero into the buffer and only then check if it's zero right that way um it just handles that situation automatically so we have dump uh 69 uh, for 20 right so here's dump 69 for 20 and dump zero um and probably we want to actually put we want to put an extra new line at the beginning Yes, because as you can see, there is no separation in here. And if you try to simulate the program, right, so there's automatically a new line at the end of this thing, right? There's automatically a new line. I think we have to have a new line in here. So the way we're going to have a new line in here, I suppose, is just like this, right? At the end, we're going to have a new line uh, and buffer size is going to be initially like this. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Not quite sure. What's going to be the easiest way to actually approach that? Uh, because we want to put that at the beginning. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So I suppose, yeah. Is that a good thing? Is that a good thing? Well, I mean, it's going to work and uh, let's just do it like that. And there we go. As you can see, it actually separated everything. And uh, that's precisely what we, want, what we want to have in here. And uh, what I want to do now, I just want to take this function and um, take its assembly and just stick that assembly into, into my program. So I'm thinking I'm going to use Godbolt. I think Godbolt is actually a little bit easier to use in here because it, will, it produces the Intel ASM, right? It produces Intel ASM. Uh, two, 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 two. So I'm gonna just take this entire stuff. So it's a little bit of a cheating, but I think it's fine. Okay. Please don't report me to Twitch stuff. Okay, for for cheat for cheating on the stream. Uh, so size t also requires std lib, I suppose. I think I think that's what it requires. Um, and that's a pretty. 
That's a pretty big shit. Okay, so I already put O3 in here. So yeah and it calls to a system function so we'll have to do something about that okay in any case let's actually copy paste this entire stuff and uh we're gonna call it a dump uh to to the two so this is gonna be dump uh fourth yes there we go uh we're gonna put this thing somewhere in here right so that's the entire thing uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four. And um, uh, go in here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. One, two, three, four. We have to be super careful. Mm -hmm. Come on. Ah, uh, why? Why are you so slow? Come on. Is, is the sound okay right now? Because the computer having like trouble to do all of that shit. Oh my god, my, my computer is literally dying. Okay, so that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to do in here. Um, mm, 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 mm. Sound is fine, sound is fine. Okay, thank you, thank you so much for telling me that. All right, so, aha. Uh -huh. So that's what we're generating in here and uh, we're returning in here and essentially where do we accept the argument? Um, if I remember correctly the actual uh, call convention in Linux is that the first argument goes into RDI right so I suppose if we want to dump something right if we want to dump something we'll have to uh, pop RDI and then out right um, call dump like this. Mm, Alright, so hopefully that will produce something reasonable. Uh, and we'll see if it's gonna work. So it's definitely not gonna work first try, but uh, at least it's gonna uh, generate some sort of error. Uh, okay, so parsing instruction unexpected. Uh, move ABS. Um, so what the hell is move ABS? Mm, in assembly code, uh, move ABS. Instruction to load arbitrary 64-bit constant into a register. I mean, it's usually done with just move, isn't it? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's usually done with just a move. Mm. Is that like at and crap that sneaked into the into my <laughs> into my compiler? Uh, okay, okay. So PTR, well. So what kind of assembly is that? What what kind of assembly good ball generates? Because it's really weird. Um, because I, if I remember correctly, in Nazem you don't have to put PTR in any of these things, so it's not really important. Uh, PTR is not a Nazem keyword. Oh yeah, I keep modifying the original file. I'm supposed to modify this thing. Um, all right. So what else do we have in here? Um, mm -mm -mm, call. Oh shit! I forgot a new line. Okay. So it's going to be called dump. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Write is undefined. Okay, so here is an interesting thing. So it calls to write from the standard C library, but we want to perform a C call. Luckily, the call convention for the functions, for the user functions, and for the C calls is the same. Uh, you use RDI, RSI, and stuff like that. So I suppose one of the things we want to do in here, like instead of like call right we want to do syscall but we also want to make sure we also want to make sure that the racks contains the code of the right so where is the uh, syscall table where is the syscall table uh did i close it i feel like i already closed it shit uh linux syscalls 
Linux Syscalls. Linux Syscalls. Where is the right? It's one actually. So uh, we're gonna put one in here. So syscall. Right. Instead of calling to the uh, library function, we're gonna be calling to the to the syscall to the operating system. And uh, okay, comma separator. Did I forget a new line yet again? Uh, yep, I did in fact forget. So it's actually super easy to forget. Maybe I should maybe uh, have a special function that puts a new line for me. Uh, but I couldn't give a shit. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the awesome that got generated. It got compiled also fine, uh, just fine. And we have a dump in here. And if I try to run the hello, uh, it didn't do anything. Nice. Huh. I wonder why. <gasps> mm. So that is very, very strange. So let's try to see. Uh huh. So you pop RDI, and I suppose it goes into RDI, right? Uh, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> that is very, very strange. Maybe we could try to bust out the debugger and just look and see what's there. Um, oh, it's output. I'm calling the wrong program. Okay, so let me actually remove the hello. It's not hello, it's output. Yeah, yeah. so I should I'm supposed to call output. Oh, that, that kind of worked. Look at that. And this is because uh, something is wrong with negative values so we were trying to print a negative value that is very interesting actually mm, 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 mm. so i s oh yeah okay i'm i'm actually fucked up the order i think i know what's going on here i in fact fucked up the order so the first one yeah it's actually rbx and then it's the same situation yeah uh all right so it's gonna be main uh fourth uh, compile all right and then i'm gonna try to output there we go 16 so and that's the native program actually so we managed to compile this sequence of operations into a native assembly uh, that's what we managed to do in here so we can simulate this sequence of things right we can simulate it uh right so there we go or at some point we can just compile it right if we feel like it so there we go. Maybe at some point we're gonna actually rewrite the compiler in itself, uh, making this entire thing self-hosted. So we're gonna use Python as like a bootstrapping language. And then once the language is mature enough, we can rewrite it in itself. So yeah, self-hosting. Um, that would be actually kind of cool, I think. I do think so. Um, all right, so I think I need to... Uh, I'm gonna remove the dump. So the, the, the trick of actually like using C to implement some algorithms and just compile them to Asm and embed them there is actually super effective. Um, so I think I'm gonna use it more. I really like that. <laughs> I really like that idea. But maybe the language should be mature enough so you don't have to do that. So you can implement all of that within the language if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, it's kind of cool. Really like that. So I think the most important thing we want to have in here is basically unhard code the program. Uh, we want to be able to just write the sequence of these operations in the file and then feed that file into the compiler and either simulate it or uh, compile it into assembly and whatnot. Mm -mm. So uh, let me just git ignore a bunch of things. Git ignore is going to be the output, and we ignore everything that is an output. And uh, so in a readme, uh, we're going to have a quick start. Quick start. Uh, console holla um, port pi, uh, and what we're going to have in here is essentially. Uh, you can just simulate something or you can uh, compile and once you compile this entire thing 
you can run the output like so. Uh, so I suppose this is going to be the first commit, if I understand correctly. Right, so it's a git init, and this is going to be the first commit. So we don't need the build anymore. Uh, ready, set, a go. Um, so where I'm going to put all that? New. So, Porth. Uh, Porth. It's like Porth, but in Python. Mm -hmm. So, the entire thing is going to be public and then create repository. Two, two, two. Then I'm just gonna push this thing in here. Uh, add origin, and it's just gonna be like there we go. And yes, yes, yes. Go away, freaking yes. Is it ready already? Yes. Give it a star. Give it a like. Subscribe and follow. So, um, what's the, the current project thingy? So making, uh, uh, let's update the project command, uh, update cmd project or uh, that or the sender, uh -huh. source code, uh -huh. like this, and we update this I think. There we go. Project command has been updated successfully, I suppose. Uh, all right, so we have fourth. So we want to unhard code this entire shit, right? Um, so this one is going to be interesting. So for the simulation, we'll have to provide the. Um, mm -hmm. So file, right? So this is going to be the file, and this is also going to be the file, right? So you either simulate or you compile the file. Um, so this is rather interesting. <laughs> I have an idea. I have a small idea. If I have a list of things, one, two, three, I can sort of pop from the end by doing something like this. Okay, so I can pop from the left by doing this kind of operation, right? So I can reassign it like so. Um, which is fine. Mm, so I might as well want to do something like argv, right? And I'm going to reassign this thing in here. Uh, then instead of referring directly to sys argv, I'm going to refer it to here. Uh, then I probably want to remove uh, argv, uh, remove program, right? Remove program. Then I'm gonna extract the subcommand and I'm gonna uh, remove uh, the subcommand like this. So we're sort of basically like a shifting. Oh yeah, it's it's basically like shift that I write in my C programs all the time. Is can I can I have something like that in Python as well? That would be actually rather useful. Uh, shift uh, which accepts um, access right, and then in here. Um, I'm going to have a result, which is access zero. And then I want to return access one. Um, actually, I want to reassign, but unfortunately it's not going to work. I'm pretty sure it's not going to work because I cannot pass this by a reference. Um, I can pass this by a reference. So let's actually see if it's going to work. Okay, so I'm going to have wise one, two, three, four, right? And then I want to do shift wise. Uh, it didn't, oh my God, I'm going to get one more time, I should have actually returned the result, right? I wanted to return the result. One more time, wise, one, two, three, four. Wise is that, we're shifting wise, it returns one, and if we take a look at wise, didn't do anything. Uh, so you cannot pass a list by a reference. So maybe it's a thing, Python pass list by reference. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, 
to to argument uh, passed by assignment. Uh, the rationale behind this towards the parameter passed is actually a reference. Uh, a mutable type. Um, mm, mm, mm. Mm. So maybe we have to actually do that slightly differently. So maybe instead of shift, we could create something like uncons. Right, so we're gonna have uncons situation. So more like a more like a functional programming thing, where uh, this is the first one and this is the rest of them, right? So something like this, and that allow you quite easily do something like that, right? So you can basically uncons mm, the entire thing. And uh, I want to reassign this stuff like this. Okay, can I do something like? Um, X axis on cons axis. Is that a thing I can do? So here's the X. Okay, this is actually perfect. So then I can sequentially then. I guess that's one way to do that. Uh, sure. So uh, I don't personally don't care. Um, on cons. So this is gonna be axis and uh, two, two, two. So it's gonna be axis zero, uh, axis uh, one, like so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so is there a such thing, for instance, if I wanna have something like this, is underscore a valid variable name or can I use it for wildcards? Uh, yeah, I, well, it's, it's a valid name apparently. Interesting. Uh, so let me let me see. So we're gonna see argv and um, maybe I can use it as as the thing. So I'm gonna just ignore it. So argv, um, argv. That way I sort of like remove this entire thing, but at the same time uh, I can just do um, the uncons argv, right? So then argv uh, uncons. Oh, this is actually super cool because now I can check this stuff in here. Right, first I got rid of the program. Holy shit, I can now actually take the program. Right, I can take the program and now I can pass the program to the usage. Right, program uh, like this. So I can have a customizable program depending on how the file is called. Right, uh, so this is actually kind of cool, right? Depending on what it's like sort of sim link to is going to be different, right? So here's the program, here's the rest of the arguments. If the uh, argument's less than one, right? If it's less than one, uh, it's going to be like that. So here we kind of like making a very, uh, like a bold assumption that argv length is going to be at least one right uh, so we basically extract the program uh, if it's less than one we print uh, this entire stuff then uh, we can safely do that and here if uh, len argv ah shit uh, argv less than one we can uh, print the error yet again um, so it's going to be program uh, then print error no um, input file is provided for the simulation and then we can exit with uh, one right and then we can do something like um, mm -mm, input uh, file path right argv on cons uh, argv there we go so this is actually a pretty good uh, idiom of handling this entire stuff uh, so yeah basically on cons um yeah it's pretty yeah so the, the workflow is actually pretty solid in here so uh really like that mm -hmm. so and i suppose we're going to be actually providing input file path uh, as the argument of simulate program all right so and input file path you know what i think it would be better to have a function uh, that loads the program from file, right? So this is in the program. Um, I have a, a bunch of collisions in here, which I'm not happy with. 
So we have a program, which is the collection of operations in here, and we have a program um, as a program name. So maybe I should call it program name, if you know what I'm talking about. It's going to be program name uh, everywhere in here. And then uh, I want to be able to load program from, uh, from file. And this is going to be input file path. Um, program, uh, program path. And this is going to be a program which I can then simulate. All right. Uh, this is actually quite cool, I think. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Hmm. So I want to translate this program into like a source code. So we'll need to think about the syntax, right? So this is going to be test and what's going to be the extension for the port? Uh, maybe well, let's just use port right away. So I think it's a okay extension, the whole um, the, the whole name of the language. So how are we going to be pushing the numbers? I think we're going to go with the fourth idea where the uh, number itself constitutes that you're pushing that number into the stack. Right? So, and then 34, 35, and if you want to sum them up, uh, you do plus. As far as I know, in fourth, uh, dump is dot, right? So through a dot, you print the, uh, the top of the stack uh, to the standard output. Um, all right, so uh, we can do the similar thing in here, and this is the program that is encoded in here, right? Um, looks pretty good. So now we need to load that program into the memory and then simulate it and maybe also compile it. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds to my good. Hopefully it does. Uh, hopefully it in fact does. All right. So let's actually remove this entire stuff uh, and uh, let me see, let me see. So we need to implement this function. Load program from file. Um, so file path. So how can I read the whole thing into the, into the memory? Uh, Python read whole file. Um, read entire file into the Python into the Python string. So we just do read. Uh, okay, fair enough. Mm, so with open file path, uh, we're reading this entire thing as f, and then we just return f read. All right, so we just return f read. I wonder if I can just play with this entire thing. Can I load the uh, port? Uh, oh my God, it's so slow, fuck. Uh, okay, invalid syntax. Oh, okay. Um, one more time. Oh, I have to. Ah, uh, load. Um, okay. So it didn't like. Oh, it. Okay, I, I see. So the IPython actually creates an environment where uh, the main is defined, right? So it runs it as a actual program, but this is not what I want. Uh, load program from file and uh, I'm going to do hello. What was it? It was test port, right? It was test port. Uh, no such file. That is really, really strange oh, because I never actually saved it. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, there we go. Okay, so now I want to split this entire thing, um, which is nice. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. So can I actually put some extra stuff in here, uh, right? And then I can I want to split, and that splits it into a word into words. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, so now what I want to do, uh, I'm going to be splitting this entire thing and for word in these words um, I want to convert that word into an operation um, <clears throat> so parse uh, word as op right and that should give us like a sequence of these operations parse word as op um, so we need to check if something is a number, right? So if I have something like 34, it converted it there. If it's not a number, 
uh, it says invalid literal for int. Okay, that's very interesting. So maybe first we want to check uh, for special things, right? If it's plus, we return uh, plus. Uh, if it's minus, uh, we return um, return minus. If it's dot, if it's dot, uh, we return dump. Otherwise, um, we return push int word. And if it's not an integer, it will throw an error. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I also want to assert that count op here was expected for uh, exhaustive uh, op handling in parse word as op. There we go. So if we add more operations, so this entire thing will fail, uh, prompting us to actually add a new thing in here. Uh, all right, so can I just reload? Is, the, is it possible? So there's a reload extension, but I don't think uh, worth. Oh, okay, it's, it's reloaded it. So if I try to do uh, load from file, will it give me? It didn't do shit, that's cool. Uh, okay, so let's do uh, test and support pi. Uh -huh. And then I'm gonna try to load program from file, uh, test worth, and count p is not defined. Well, at least it tried. Count ops, okay, count. I'm already getting tired. Uh, so it has to be ops. All right, anyway, so I think we can already try to test that, if you know what I'm talking about. We can already try to test that and uh, I'm gonna try to simulate this thing and as you can see it says simulate requires the file so let's actually do test uh, test port and uh, non type object is not iterable okay so it didn't return the program yeah I see so you're supposed to return it okay uh, makes sense okay there we go. So if I now go into my program, so test port, uh, I should be able to add 10, 20 plus, uh, and maybe dot, right? So, and now it has 30, right? So we unhead coded the, uh, the program for the simulation, right? Which is nice. So if I provide some sort of a gibberish in here, it will say that uh, this thing is not a number, right? So we can remove that, so we can simulate this thing at least. And we're about to actually write a compiler for, for this thing as well, right? So this is going to be port. Um, so we're going to have a similar situation, right? So no file is provided for the compilation, right? So this is the program path. Uh, then we're gonna load program from the file we're loading program from the file uh, then we're compiling the program and then uh, linking and everything else okay so now i can try to um, okay this is the simulation and now i'm trying to compile the entire thing and let's take a look at the compiled version so the compiled version looks like this uh, white space All right so what do we have in here uh, and we do have the uh, 10 and 20 in here. So if I try to run the compiled version, uh, there we go. So we have that shit. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we generated a native program uh, from, from this sequence of tokens, right? So this entire thing actually compiled it down to a native code. And this is the assembly of that native code. And we wrote this entire shit in Python. So that's pretty cool. Mm, 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 mm. So we have a pie cache. I suppose I want to git ignore pie cache. Uh, so, so we don't want to have that shit in here. Um, mm, 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 mm. So maybe we're going to have examples. And this is where we're going to put uh, the test port. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And um, 
let me see. Uh, okay, so unhard code, uh, unhard code uh, program, right? So we're gonna push it like that. And um, so do I wanna do anything else? I want you to also update the readme, right? So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna write examples, um, test, fourth, and then, uh, yeah, there we go. So this is gonna be the quick start. Um, so this is the compilation. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Maybe we're also gonna provide the simulation. Um, mm, I don't know. I'm a little bit tired, so... Uh, emulate. It, is it simulation? I think it's supposed to call be, uh, supposed to be uh, emulation or interpretation or... I don't know. Yeah, I'm tired. So, uh, update a readme. Okay, I'm gonna push that right into the repo, and you can find the source code of this entire thing uh, in here. Uh, Porth. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, all right. So, I didn't want to stream for too long today. Uh, so, I guess I'm gonna call it today. So next time we're gonna try to add more interesting things in here. Uh, specifically, I wanna add conditions and loops, right? So because that will make the language Turing complete uh, to some extent, and maybe we'll be able to do something interesting with it. So yeah, thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. Uh, have a good one and I see you next time. I don't know when, I don't know where. Tomorrow I'm probably not gonna stream because I will need to do some other stuff um thank you for all of the subscriptions and donations and stuff like that and let's maybe rate somebody i don't know we haven't rated anyone for quite some time so does anyone streaming on the new software and game development section mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice website, Twitch. Supinik is live. Hmm. What is he doing? Uh, K Dominic, thank you so much for Twitch Prime subscription. Your first subscription, by the way. Welcome to our epic uh, subscription club. I cannot see shit in this mist, to be fair, uh, because the camera actually, you know, obscures the view. So I think I'm gonna actually remove this thing. Uh, let's write Supinik. Uh, eh. So maybe I want to pause. Uh, raid. Uh, Supinik. Twitch is unbearable to the same. Okay, get ready for the raid, boys and girls. Get ready for the raid, and I see you all uh, next time. Love you. Mm -hmm.